cocktail when it's roughly only about 125 ml of liquid when two of the ingredients, your orange liqueur, your orgeat, make up about a quarter of that, they're really gonna have a big influence on how that cocktail tastes at the end. Before we focus on the rum blends in a Mai Tai, which will happen in future videos, I think we need to kind of focus on two of the other vital ingredients in the Mai Tai. The orgeat, orgeau, orgi, and the orange liqueur. You know what, I'm never gonna get my head around how you say it properly. Orgeat, orgeau, orgeat, orge. Which one? Now look, my golden rule for cocktails, and I mean proper, proper banging cocktails, the better the ingredients taste individually on their own, the better the end cocktail is gonna taste. Now many people just think any old brand will do, but trust me people, trust me, there is a big difference in taste between brands. And as I say about rum, you know, what I might like in an orange liqueur, you might not. So there's gonna have to be a certain element of putting your faith in me, trusting me to kind of guide you. Or you could just think, sod him, I'll back myself, I'll choose my own ingredients, thank you very much. Now before I dive in and give you my thoughts on, and tr directions on certain brands, uh, and kind of what I think you should be looking for. If you're still on the fence, if you still don't believe me about the quality ingredients you use in your cocktails, then I just wanna give you something to think on. A kind of analogy that I use all the time, and this will resonate with meat lovers, and to be fair, veggie lovers, because what I'm gonna tell you now is so, so true. Look, I'm gonna use Tesco's as the reference. That's where I go shopping in the UK, Tesco's. If you buy a steak, from Tesco's or your vegetables from Tesco's, look, they're gonna be pretty decent. Of course they are, they don't sell terrible stuff. But if you go and buy a steak from your local butcher or if you go to your little village greengrocer and get your veggies from there, I promise you the steak and the veggies are gonna taste so much better. Yes, they might be slightly more expensive than going to the supermarket, but taste-wise, meal-wise, there's just no comparison. And that's generally the same with booze, with your spirit brands, or at least with the bigger brands. Because we know smaller independent brands, especially in the UK, we've got lots of them, craft distillers, whatever you wanna call them, the smaller independent brands have got much higher overheads. So naturally their prices are gonna be a little bit more expensive. But generally speaking, when it comes to the mass market, more commercial brands, the more expensive the liqueur, the better it's gonna taste. Hey rum fans, my name's Steve the Barman and I'm here to help you on your rum journey by mainly focusing on rums under £50. And if you want even more help, then don't forget to come and join us in my free Discord community. Or even better, click the join button below any of my videos and come and join my membership because there's so many quality perks to be had in there, including being able to get involved in the brand taste alongs on my live show every Sunday night. Now, when we're talking about liqueurs and syrups, I'm not saying you have to go all out. I'm not saying you have to go and search for the most expensive brand and buy that. That's, that's wrong. But what I am saying, you'll notice a hell of a difference between the cheap stuff and the next level up. And here's something else for you to think on as well. I'm full of these today. Get your little heads thinking. Here's something else. In a cocktail, when it's roughly only about 125 ml of liquid, when two of the ingredients, your orange liqueur, your orgeat, make up about a quarter of that, they're really gonna have a big influence on how that cocktail tastes at the end. So I urge you, please don't skimp. I'm not saying go and spend all your money. I'm just saying don't skimp, don't just buy the cheapest. Do a little bit of research first. Now, before I go any further, I want some interaction from you guys. I want two things from you, please. Uh, in the comments below, firstly, let's talk about your or ja. However we say, how do we say that? Comment first, right? Phonetically in the comments. But what's your go-to brand or do you make it yourself? I know I've got pretty much the UK brands covered for this. I know them inside out. What I am really, really interested in is the US and Canadian brands and around the world. But to be fair, in the UK, if you've done a taste test, if you've tried them all, what's your go-to? And don't, don't tell me you swear by something if you haven't tasted the rest because I have tasted most of them most of them, all of them, uh, pretty regularly. So I know which ones I prefer. So I wanna know about the orgeat, first off. Secondly, the orange liqueur. What is your go-to orange liqueur in a Mai Tai? Are you a traditionalist? Just because Trader Vic use it, do you swear by Pierre Ferrand, dry orange curacao? Or if you caught up with the times and realized in this day and age, there's a whole load of different, better orange liqueurs on the market for you to try. Oh, that's tasty, by the way. Oh, that's tasty. 
I'm making a different Mai Tai every day at the moment. Right, let's talk about, uh, let's, first things first, let's do the syrups. Let's talk about, I'm just going to call it Orgeet. I don't know how you say it. I'm, I call it Cornish Chav Orgeet. Now look, I've got this bottle out here. Uh, just to start the video off, basically. But I have got a blend. I use a blend of or or Jack. Let's, let's swap about or Jack syrups. I'm going to really annoy you now because I'm going to every time I say it, I'm going to say something different. Uh, but I've got my blend here, and my blend. I've done this tasting many many times. Monin, Gifar, ODK, William Fox. Uh, what's the other one? Bristol syrups. Uh, there's a few others on the market as well. I have tasted them all. These two are by far my best, but what I found was that actually blending them together, two thirds ODK, one third William Fox. Oh my God, that's good. Now, when I've done these tastings, I'll be honest, I've just really tasted them on their own. And as a result, I've never really rated um, Bristol syrups. I've never really rated Monin. I've never really rated Gifar. Why? Because in my mind, they are not Orgeat syrups. Orgeo syrups, told you I was going to swap it up every time. Orgeo syrups should traditionally have a little bit of orange flower water in there, orange blossom water, whatever you want to call it. Maybe a touch of vanilla, maybe. But it should be a little bit more than just an almond syrup. And that to me is exactly what Monin and Gifar and Bristol are. They are just decent, really good, but almond syrups. But these two, when you taste them, oh my God, they are a whole league above just on neat, just tasting them on their own. They, they just smash it out of the park for me. Now in the past, I've been quite passionate about these two. I, I have, especially the ODK before the William Fox came on the scene. I've been really passionate, but something hit me. Something dawned on me just before I was come on to shoot this video. Going back 20, 30 years, the amount of orange liqueurs on the market was pretty poor. We just didn't have the abundance that we've got now. I could go on to Master of Malt, for instance, and I could find 20 different orange liqueurs easily. So back then, when the quality wasn't as good, I'm gonna basically, I'm, my head is thinking, the quality or the or, a proper orange so with that orange coming through in it, should be vital to the cocktail. But in this day and age, where we've got so many orange liqueurs, so many different levels of vibrancy of orange liqueurs, does the orgeat actually matter? Would an almond syrup, a really good almond syrup, which Monin and Gifar is, are they, do they work in a, in a Mai Tai? So basically what I'm saying is, in 2022, does the orange blossom water in an orgeat really actually matter? However, one thing I do know, if you try this blend of orgeat, that's wrong, or ja. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to love it because it, it just tastes amazing. Because I can get hold of these very, very easily, it would take a hell of a lot of me, for me to actually move away from this blend and just have a bottle of Monin. It would. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about you guys where, you know, you are just going to really focus on buying one product. So I want you to have a play. Because at the end of the day, this series, this whole se Mai Tai series is not about me preaching. It's more of about coming together for a collaborative effort to try and find, to try and help everyone make the best possible Mai Tais. I could stand here all day and talk about the orange liqueur that you should use, the orgeat syrup that you should use, the rum blends you should use. But what I like, you might not like. So I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to get you thinking and to open up this conversation to everyone. And just one final thing on the brands of Orgeat. We're back to Orgeat now. I know many of you love and have got the time to make your own syrup. And I've not got a problem with that. In fact, I'd probably encourage it to be fair. However, I haven't got the time, nor have I got the patience to stand there and do it myself. I do prefer faff free. I just want to be able to grab a bottle when I need it and not think about anything else. But again, interaction from you guys. If you have got a killer recipe from an Orgeat syrup, whack it in the comments below. If you're willing to share it, let everyone see it. And for those of you that do want to make it along, have a look in the comments, see if there's any recipes in there that take your fancy. Because it is pretty easy to make, let's be honest. Now, I've briefly touched on it previously, but let's move, focus our attention more on the orange liqueur side of things. And I purely had the Clem on throughout the video because that was the newest brand that I've had. I'm just filming this straight after we did the Clem uh, live show with Ash. That was brand new to me and it is flipping phenomenal. So tasty. But as you'll see, I've got a few brands here including a very old and dusty bottle of Grand Marnier. And I was looking for the Cointreau, but I just realized the Cointreau is at the other studio drink stuff. Now I was thinking about buying the other brands, so I had them here. But the truth is, 
I don't need to have 12, 15 different orange liqueurs here. I'm just not going to use them. But I do have to give a big shout out to uh, Claire for sending that through ages ago when I did the Mai Tai series on the live shows. That little beast is a little sample of Pierre Ferrand dry orange curacao. Now, as I said, you'll see my brands here. I'll talk about what this is in a second. But the one big omission I have here that I do shout about a lot is Mandarin Napoleon. I promise you, if you taste that, yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but if you taste that, that is an absolutely phenomenal orange liqueur. I haven't actually done it in a blind tasting where I've had uh, this now, the Compañero orange uh, elixir and the Clément. I would love to do those head to head, but traditionally speaking, Mandarin Napoleon is like Grand Marnier on steroids. It is gorgeous. But whether it would pip those two, I don't know. Now, long-term loyal followers to mine, especially live shows where we have the chats and the bounces, will know I'm not a huge fan of Pierre Ferrand dry orange curacao. I never really have been. For me, it's obviously dry. It's bitter. There are more orange forward products on the market these days. It was functional back in its day for Trader Vic. These days. For me, I'm sorry, Pierre Ferrand. It just doesn't cut it alongside these. Now, as I say, I'm fortunate that I've got access to, and because this is my business, YouTube is what I do, so I would have two or three uh, different orange liqueurs here. I'm fortunate to be, able to be able to create a blend. So what this is, is my blend of orange liqueur. Tried and tested, and I absolutely love it. Made pre-acquiring this. So what this actually is, is a blend of these three. One, two, three. What it is, is half... Um, Giffard, orange uh, curacao triple sec, half of that, quarter of the Compañero, a quarter of the Fortunella. And if you're wondering what the Fortunella is, it's a kumquat liqueur. I probably wouldn't use that solely in a Mai Tai, but that does add this lovely sort of citrusy, zesty kind of, because kumquats are just tiny, tiny oranges bursting with flavour, just adds that little bit of spark to this. Now I'm going to get preachy for a couple of seconds here because I will back myself on this. There are a couple of brands that I think you should avoid. Firstly, Bowls. I've got it up there. It's pretty much half full. I don't really like it. It's fake. It's meh. It's just not a great. It's the Bowls Dry Orange Curacao. It's just basically not. It's, I bought it because it was cheap. I bought it a few years ago because it was like eight, nine pounds or whatever it was. Definitely won't be restocking that. The same also goes for De Kuiper's Triple Sec, their version of Cointreau. And actually that refers to Bowles Triple Sec and pretty much all the Triple Secs on the market. If you specifically want a Triple Sec, buy Cointreau. If you, if you really don't want to order online, go to your supermarkets and get Cointreau. But that is a huge step up. But it is also worth noting that some of these brands do have premium upgrades. For example, the Kuiper do actually make Mandarin Napoleon. So while Mandarin Napoleon is probably double the price of the triple sec, or the Kuiper's triple sec, I know which one I'd rather have. And that also, as much as I hate to say it, I'm not the biggest fan of Giffard's lower entry range of liqueurs. They're decent, they're slightly better than Bowles and De Kuiper for me, but they're posh. this is why they have a posh range, because the posh Giffard's are phenomenal. And for only a couple of extra quid, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Edmund Briatek would also fall into that bowls category as well. I think the quality of them, personally speaking, I think the quality has gone down. But the other brand I do actually quite like, but we don't see that much of, is Cartron. Cartron have some phenomenal um, kind of liqueurs. I've not tried their orange, their curacao, whatever they do, but I've tried plenty of others like their passion fruit and, and things like that. They are brilliant. But there is one final kind of curveball to throw in here. It's a bit of a controversial statement, but Monin actually do a range of liqueurs as well. Not syrups, liqueurs, alcoholic liqueurs. Now, I'd avoided Monin liqueurs for a few years. It wasn't until I started working with them in drink stuff and actually got the chance to taste some of them. I was, I was pretty blown away for the price as well. They are pretty damn good. And in full disclosure, I use uh, the Muir, the Blackberry, uh, the Peach, and the Strawberry in my Hen Party Cocktail Masterclasses. I'm not saying they're the best quality, but for the price and the flavour, they do that job very, very well. As much as I love GFAR's posh Frambois de Ronce, you know, price-wise, business-wise, business head-on, I'm not going to be using that in a Hen Party when Monin's uh, Creme de Muir is actually pretty much half the price and nearly as good. Now, the whole point to that is Monin do an orange curacao. I've not tried it, but I'm probably going to buy a bottle just for my own curiosity. Because at roughly nine or ten pounds, that could be a game changer. But I'll, I'll wait to see on that. 
watch this space. Yes, it may be a little bit sweeter. Yes, it may throw the balance off slightly to your cocktail. That's the other thing you've got to realize as well. Some of these are sweeter than the others. Like dry, the original recipe is with a dry orange curacao. So if you start using something like the shrub or the, um, the uh, what's this, the Compañero uh, orange liqueur, then these are sweeter than the Pierre Ferrand. So your whole ratio, your whole recipe is going to be off slightly if you follow the same recipe. So you do have to adjust the taste. But that's the beautiful thing. We can adjust the taste. So hopefully this video, we've covered the orgeat, we've covered the orange liqueur. There's enough there to get you thinking. Now I know some of you are just going to go out and buy the cheapest possible ingredients. I get that. But I also know some of you really do buy into the better quality equals better taste. And because of that, I really cannot wait to see some of your recipes coming into the comments below. Because the more I think about how this series of videos is going to pan out over the next sort of month or so, there's a fair chance that in some videos, I'm going to be making your recipes if I've got the ingredients behind me.